what's up guys welcome back to reality tv chat so today we have a story about an american tourist who came here for vacation and rented a place in montego bay and found out that the, that the place was for pastor kevin smith that which is a cult pastor so they been there what they did they locked them up they were locked in chained in his place remember you know, guys she went there for vacation so what they do they kidnap them she also said in that um they were doing human trafficking with females and a lot of stuff were going on there she also that say, said that when that when she came out people were think people, when she reported it to the police they're thinking that she was overreacting and all of those stuff so guys um before you get into this video i'm asking you please to like comment subscribe and share please just click that subscribe button before you get into the video guys so here's the clip of what she's saying <sighs> hey y'all let me take a quick breath <sighs> it's a great day i'm in orlando florida journey's ninth birthday but i want to stop for a minute and address the situation now i know y'all remember we barely got back into the country February 27th, 2020, after we had those problems in Jamaica from being chained into that property. And I know I remember a whole lot of y'all thought I was overreacting. A whole lot of y'all was like, had the audacity even comment on the fact that I was cursing in the video. But what I'm, what I'm so amazed by, my body has been tingling since I found out that this very man, the very man, that chained us in the property. Jamaican police raided his um, church. They're calling a cult and found uh, several dead bodies from a religious sacrifice. They found 13, 14 children, 31 women that they had been sex trafficking, selling, selling to um, higher up officials in Jamaica, just a mess. So, the reason why my body is just like, Lord, oh my God, this is confirmation beyond confirmation because I don't know precisely. I used to always say, I don't know what they was going to do to us. We don't know what they was going to do. We don't know why they chained us in the property. We don't know what they was going to do. But not only did they chain us in the property, they they had implanted some of their, what they called house boys there in the garage saying that that's customary. That's what they do in Jamaica you know, in case we needed anything, you know, but basically they scoped us out and realized there was no man there. And there were eight children, several women, you know, um, we too old for sex traffickers. I don't know what they was going to do with me and my friend. Uh, but the kids, my daughter, my baby grandson was eight months old. My daughter was pregnant. My, it was several young girls there. My friends had young girls. And, you know, when you, now when I look back and find out like, God, if I didn't know, if I didn't know that I am covered by the blood, ooh, I know it now. Because, and understand, it's not just my prayers. It's just, it's the prayers of our ancestors that protect us. Yes, instinctively, I felt that something was wrong. The minute I asked to leave and they locked the gate and said, no, you can't leave. I instinctively felt that something was wrong, which is why in the video you see us hopping the fence. But sometimes we can question that instinct sometimes we can be like oh am i tripping am i overreacting no 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 you know but i am so glad so glad that god gave me the good sense to get out of there because now that i see what has happened and who this man really was i don't think we, any of us would be here today and, and remember i told you that the jamaican police didn't do nothing i went back the second day to get a report and they hadn't even put it on the books you know, once again, this is not about Jamaica. I had a ball in Jamaica. Everybody in Jamaica is not bad. This man wasn't even Jamaican, okay? Kept Bishop, his ex, he calls himself, his excellency, Bishop Anto, Kevin Antonio Smith. So at first they were saying that he was dead, but now it looks like he shot at the police when they raided his little compound coat. And, um... He shot at the police and several people were dead. They had slashed one woman's throat as a sacrifice. Another person who I think is who reached out to the police, I'm not 100% sure, was next to be sacrificed. 
and that, you know, it's amazing what people can do and claim that they're doing it in the name of Jesus. So all I want to say, y'all, is my God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Had we not hopped that fence and got out of there, we don't know what would happen. God, ooh, if I don't know, which I already knew, you know I knew the, knew already that you was real. But who? But to look back a year later and see that this very person that had you right there in his clutches is capable of this type of behavior in the name of Jesus. And with his church pathways preaching and acting like he is um, the savior, the Messiah and sacrificing and killing people and tra trafficking girls. And we were right there. This man was right there, had us locked in the property. Whew. All I can say is, I couldn't be more grateful that God gave me the good sense and the intuition and the spirit to know when he is talking to me. To say, no, get your butt out of here now. Run. Now we don't know who and how and who else was involved and, and what else is going on. And maybe it's just this man that's been doing this type of stuff in, in Jamaica. But thank God to the 14 children, the 31 women that were rescued that this meant. Whew, I can't do it. <sighs> so anyway, thank you, Jesus. You know, sometimes things happen in our life that give us confirmation that God is real, confirmation that God protected us, confirmation that God has interceded when we didn't know. We didn't know. I knew I was in danger, but no way we could have known. We have jokingly over over this year said, we don't know what he was going to do. We don't know if he was going to sell the kids. You know, we've kind of said that jokingly, not having any clue that we were in the hands of somebody that was actually capable of this behavior. And every one of us, every one of us made it out safely. Every one of us hopped that darn fence. Even Joy, she was pregnant at the time. That baby made it here safely. Baby Rio, that's Baby Rio. Um, Barbara's kids, Crystal's kids, everybody. We were, man. So I'm not going to give this no more energy. But um, he is not dead. Because that was the first information that we had. Um, he's in custody in Jamaica. I don't even know what to say. Um, but how? It makes how of all the people in Jamaica, we end up in the hands of this person. But we made it out. <laughs> so I'm not going to give it no more energy. It's Journey's birthday. We're at Disney World in Florida. This is day two, but the first day that we're actually going to the park. So I had to exercise for three weeks to get ready for this. <laughs> so I love you guys. Have the best day ever. I'm looking for the full, a full, complete, detailed article on this situation. I'm super busy, so I'm time to research. You know, I don't want to take no more time away from Journey. But if anybody has the full article of what happened to His Excellency, and I say that because that's what he calls himself, not giving him any honor, or any reverence, or any praise, His Excel Excellency Bishop Kevin Antoniel, O-N-T-O-N-I-E-L Smith, Montego Bay, Jamaica. Let me know. Please send it to me because I want to read the full details. I've been getting bits and pieces of everything. And you know, you never know if the police would have did something then or cared about the fact that he tried to kidnap and enslave us. Maybe these 40, 31 women or maybe these